Hello, friends. Today, I'm talking about narcissistic abuse and self-sabotage. Now, this is such, such a good topic right now because obviously it's the end of the year and so many people are thinking about setting goals. And I was thinking about how much narcissistic abuse really sets you up for failure and to experience self-sabotage over and over and over again. It's the typical two-step forward, two-step back process where it's almost like you start moving forward, you start experiencing change just to find yourself right back at the beginning again. I experienced this on my road to recovery with narcissistic abuse, and I see it being experienced by so many of my clients. So today I want to talk about three reasons why this happens. And the benefit of understanding the why is that you can start to do things differently. Kind of like the person that wants to become rich doesn't necessarily want to work more. They want to work smarter. Well, it's the same thing with healing or recovery from trauma. We don't want to be healing more or recovering more. In fact, most of us feel like we could have a degree in the narcissist and narcissistic abuse. So it's not about adding more to your life as much as it is it's about doing things differently, doing your recovery differently instead of the same thing over and over and experiencing the same results, doing things differently and finally experiencing the shifts that you've been craving. So that being said, let's dive in. The first way that narcissistic abuse really sets you up for self-sabotage is the fact that if you had narcissistic parents or a long-term relationship, because the same thing can happen if you're an adult in a long-term relationship with somebody that is constantly instilling in you negative beliefs. Now in childhood, the only thing we really had available to us when it comes to brain functioning at that time is our subconscious mind. Our cognitive thinking, our executive functioning of the brain didn't really start to develop until about the age of seven. So those first seven years, you're like a computer that somebody purchases, right? That doesn't have any, any programs and you take that computer home and you download the programs you want. Well, in the case of narcissistic abuse, your parent, if your parent is a narcissist, they're downloading programs that are going right into your subconscious mind. And sadly, these programs are always, always in favor of whatever the narcissist needs to make them happy and is always damaging to you. So for example, some of those programs are, my job is to make the other person happy. I'm not allowed to think of myself. It's selfish if I do things for myself. I can't, no matter how hard I try, things stay the same. So all of these limiting beliefs become a part of our subconscious programming. And the goals that we set, if you think about it, if you think about the goals that you want to accomplish for this upcoming year, logically, realistically, can you make those goals or can you achieve those goals with the limiting beliefs or the belief system that was installed by the narcissistic parent? No. So what we tend to do when we're setting goals is we tend to look at the actions that we want to do differently. And that's really just the external. Think of the iceberg. That's what you can see with the naked eye. But underneath those actions are the emotions that move us toward or away from that action. Those emotions are governed by the thoughts that are turned on by the belief. And if you don't change the belief, whatever action you choose to do differently, you'll be able to do it for a limited amount of time. Because as humans, our subconscious mind is like a psycho-cybernetic mechanism, very much like the thermostat in your house. So your thermostat doesn't have a mind of its own. It is set by you, right? You dictate what that temperature setting should be on your thermostat. So where I live, it's cold. So we have our, our thermostat set to 71. So that program is designed to keep the temperature in my home at 71. So let's say one of my kids opens the door and leaves it open, right? The thermostat doesn't change. It doesn't kick on my furnace immediately because it takes a little bit of time for that thermostat to register that there's been a change in temperature in the house. So it takes a little bit of time, but once it detects a deviation from its program, 
it turns on my heating system and brings it back to 71. That is exactly how our subconscious works. So we set new goals. We start doing things differently. And for a little bit, our subconscious mind is kind of like our thermostat. It's not paying attention. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's that's cute. Michelle's journaling. She's doing this. Yes, that's really cute. It doesn't do anything until I've been doing that action or, or that goal for a period of time where now it, it starts paying attention to the deviation. And then it kicks on. It kicks on self-sabotage. Self-sabotage starts showing up through procrastination. Hey, I'll do it tomorrow. I've been doing so good. I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I'm good now. I don't need to do that anymore. Or, oh, it just feels uncomfortable. Or I don't have time. And what our subconscious mind with these messages, what it's doing is trying to bring us back into alignment with whatever old limiting beliefs it's trying to keep us in. So that's one way narcissistic abuse or trauma keeps us stuck in self-sabotage is because the beliefs are designed and programmed to keep us with a certain set limiting beliefs. And when we act out of harmony with them, it kicks on discomfort and procrastination. The second way narcissistic abuse or trauma sets you up for self-sabotage has to do with implicit memory and the way the brain works. Okay, so our brain loves to learn things, memorize them so that it doesn't have to kind of exert so much energy each task you have to do. Kind of like driving a car. Remember when you first had to learn for anyone out there that still knows how to drive a manual car. When you are first learning how to drive stick shift, right? Your brain is like, oh, first gear, clutch, gas. You're thinking so much about what you have to do when you're driving. Your thoughts, you are totally, completely focused on what you have to do. Fast forward a year and you don't even have to think. Your brain's not like, oh, clutch now, then when it meets gas and then shift to second because that is why we do this and this is, nope, your brain has memorized it. So now it has put it into implicit memory. And implicit memory is so helpful for the brain because then we don't have to be thinking and, and wasting so much energy on things we already know how to do. Well, narcissistic abuse, sadly, takes a really awesome thing about the brain and it uses that against you. So for example, isn't it true that any time you did something for yourself, let's say you reached a goal and you were proud of yourself. Let's say you have a narcissistic significant other and you get a raise at work or they give you a, a reward or something positive happens to you and you come home and share it. What happens, right? Does that narcissist say, oh, I'm so proud of you. You're amazing. Do they support you emotionally? Do they build you up? Do they applaud your, your triumphs? Or are they like a needle to a balloon and they pop every single happy occurrence of your life? The answer being anytime you're happy, anytime you're accomplishing something, anytime things are going well for you, anytime you're proud of you or you're thinking about you instead of revolving 24 seven around them, it is met with intense shame, emotional abandonment, pain, rejection, false accusations about what kind of person you are. Like that's such a horrible thing you're doing. Done over and over again, your brain memorizes your celebrations, your positives with something bad. Boom, that gets coupled together in your nervous system and stored in implicit memory. So the next time you go for a goal, right? And you want to accomplish something, even if, even if the narcissist is no longer in your life, if you have these two things coupled in your nervous system, time doesn't uncouple trauma. Time doesn't work through implicit memory. You have to get in there and uncouple them. Okay. So every time you're about to go set a goal and strive for something positive, when this is in your implicit memory and it's coupled in your nervous system, your subconscious turns on and floods you with discomfort, right? Think about it. Think about every time you start going in a direction, what happens in the body? If you were really, really aware of what was going on inside of you, isn't it true that all of a sudden you'll start feeling your heart 
beat fast. You'll feel a tightness in your throat or your jaw, a tension in your chest, or this activation, this volcanic activation in your stomach that causes you so much discomfort. So what we tend to do when we get these sensations is whatever we were striving towards, we retract and then we're, we're rewarded because those sensations calm down. So now the brain's like, oh, do that bad, stop, reward, dopamine. This is where we're supposed to be. Forget about those goals. And the third way that narcissistic abuse and or trauma wind up setting you up for self-sabotage is the fact that in childhood, right? You have no inner dialogue. No child is born with an inner dialogue. It's like a, the child's a blank slate. Every inner dialogue was once an outer dialogue. So everything you were told about yourself, how you were treated and spoken to by a caregiver that was emotionally unavailable, had um, addictions or was narcissistic becomes your inner dialogue. Our thoughts, again, come from the beliefs but they turn on emotions that either move us towards something or against something. So if you have the narcissist or abusive person's inner dialogue in your mind, taking up bandwidth in your mind, and you're going towards a goal that's good for you, what do you think the thoughts are that, that start getting turned on? You're so stupid. You can't do this. No matter how hard you try, you're going to fail. Or this is dangerous. Something bad is going to happen. Other people can do it, but you can't. They're better than you. I can't stand you. You're pathetic. Right? Isn't it true that if we really listen to what was going on in the confinement of our minds, we realize that we have internalized the voice of the abuser, and that's normal. We internalize the voices. As children, we internalize the voices of our caregivers. Imagine living with somebody, like a physical, literal person that spoke to you like that. Would you be able to? Would it be easy to go for your goals? No. Well, it's just as powerful having that person in your mind. It's almost worse. It's like we're <laughs> fighting with ourselves at times. Okay. So that inner dialogue becomes really, really loud and aggressive and abusive the more you go outside of the boundaries of those limiting beliefs. So for those three reasons, Narcissistic abuse really kind of sets you up to get stuck in self-sabotage. Now that we know that though, now that we know that, we realize that learning about the narcissist is important, but we also have to realize that learning about the narcissist is not going to uproot our beliefs. We start realizing that it's not about changing the external. It's really an internal makeover that is needed after narcissistic abuse from the ground up. In other words, from our belief system to our dialogue, to being comfortable in the somatic things that come up in the body, and then the external will follow. That's what we start doing differently when we understand that. We start recreating the inside and the outside does follow. That being said, that being said, that's the goal that we have in Thrivers School of Transformation. I have a special going on for anyone that joins Thrivers for the year. Check out the coupon in the description box. I will say this, the subconscious mind, it is a habit mind. It doesn't change overnight. It's through consistency. It was one of the reasons why I created Thrivers was because it's through the consistent weekly meetings, challenges, goal setting, coaching that we do every week that really helps us to upgrade our subconscious. So make sure you check out the coupon in the description box below.